In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get up and running with the Divi Builder. So the first thing you wanna do when you purchase Divi is to come all the way down here to Divi and then click on Theme Options. Now, this area is very important because this is where we get to add our API key, which you can find by coming over here to Updates. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and entered my username and the API key. Now, this API key is very important because it allows you to get Divi updates as well as support. Now, let's talk about the fun stuff. Well, if you purchase Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you some bonuses and that is my three courses. Now, these three courses are very powerful because with the web design formula, it teaches you how to use Divi and you also get a project which shows you step by step how to use Divi to design a fully functioning website. You also have Photoshop for web designers. This is a course which will show you how to optimize your images for your WordPress website. And then finally, we have WordPress Mastery. Now, for those of you who are brand new to web design, this course is ideal because it shows you how to use WordPress. So these are the bonuses that you get when you purchase Divi. All right, so let's continue on. So once you've done this, the next area that is very, very important is the uh, theme builder. So I'm gonna come over here. So this theme builder is where you get to design all the major aspects of your website. So you shouldn't ignore this page, it's very, very important. So let's say for example, you want to build your header. This is where you'd come and start creating your header. Now this is also very interesting because if I come over here and create a new template, I can build a brand new template and look at all these options that I have. I can actually create a template for all my blog posts. I can create a template for the homepage, all pages and so on. But what's even more exciting is when I hover over here, you can actually exclude pages that you don't want the template to apply to. So this area is very, very important. And when you also add, say WooCommerce, this also loads the WooCommerce templates, which means you can create templates for specific parts of your WooCommerce shop. All right, so with this now, let's head over to the actual builder itself because this is where the fun is. So I'm gonna come over here and click on add new to add a brand new page. So let's just call this page Divi. Now, when I click on use Divi Builder, we are going to get a few options. So these options are very important because they allow you to design your website the way you want. So the first way is to build from scratch. You can choose from a pre-made layout or you can clone an existing page. So these are the three ways to get started. So let's start off with build from scratch. So if I click on start building, now, I've, now I have these options right here. So as you can see, I have my rows and this gives me my options for my rows. So you can get a full width row, you can have two columns here, you can pretty much have whatever layout you want. So let's say I choose this one right here. So that means I can now insert modules and there's quite a few here that I can add. So let's go to, uh, let's say our blurb module here. So you can see now the interface sort of like changes and this gives you now the options to go in and start customizing this particular item. So this is where I can say, okay, image and icon, I can click over here. I can change this to icon and I can choose my specific icon. So I've got line icons, I've got Divi icons, I've got font, awesome. So there's a lot of icons to choose from and this can be very, very uh, useful. So let's say I'm gonna choose this icon right here. So this tab here is the tab for entering your information. Now, let me just take a step back here. If I come back to the text, this is where I add my text. So I can say heading goes here like that. So this is where I can go in and update my text. I can also update this text right here on the bottom. Okay, so let's say I get rid of all that. You can see it's updating in real time. But let's say you want to go in and stylize what I have here because I'm sure you can agree that this doesn't look very exciting. So this is where you click on this design tab. So if I click here on design tab, I have all these options now which I can use to customize this blurb. So let's start with the image and icon. So the first thing I can do here is to change the color. So I can choose my color. And as you can see, my color has been updated. Next, I can um, choose to set my size. So as I'm dragging this, you can see there, I'm making it smaller. So let's see, I'm gonna go with 60. So this is already centered, which is very good. Now here's a quick tip. If you wanna go in and work on something very specific, you just hover over this area here and click on this paintbrush icon. This will take you directly to the item that you wanna work with. So I'm gonna align this to the center and I'm also going to change my font. So we have a ton of fonts. DV uses um, the Google fonts, so you can choose all these fonts from Google. Now my favorite font is Poppins. I'm gonna go ahead and choose it. So I'm gonna go ahead and type it in here and there it is. The next step now is to come over here and change 
make this bold, I can make it all caps, I can also change the size by clicking over here and then while I'm doing this I'm also looking over here to see if it's right. I can do letter spacing like that. Next let's say I want to work on this text over here I can just click on this pencil icon, I mean paintbrush icon and I can say okay instead of using pixels let me use 1.2 EM. There we go. Now let's say I want to change my font, I can come over here, choose my font and let's say my font is going to be Poppins, I can select it like that and as I did before I'm going to center this and if I need to uh, increase my line height, I can just come over here and increase it just like that. So as you can see, this has taken us quite a few steps. So you can imagine the stress that you have to go through to do this over and over again every time you want to add a blurb. So here's a quick tip I want to share with you. What you can do now is you can head over here to your preset and then click on create new preset from current styles. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to say blurb one. And by the way, you can create different type of styles for this. So there we go. I'm going to say blurb one. Okay. I can also assign this to default by clicking over here and then saving. So here's what's going to happen now. Once I save this, I'm going to save one more time. So let's delete this and start all over again. So I'm going to click on this plus button, search for my blurb. Here it is. Now notice what happens. My font here has already been chosen and it's the right size. It's based on the previous settings that I chose. All I have to do now is to come over here to image and icon, choose my image, and then I can just choose the icon that I want to go with. So let's say the icon is this camera here. You can see everything is all consistent. So I can add it again here using the same process. But let's say you want to uh, use a blur, but this time you want to use an image. You can come over here to image. Let's go to our library. Now, as you can see here, we have no items in our library. This is where you can go to a website here and find your image and then upload it. So I have my image here. I'm going to click here and download it. So I just want to make sure I download a small size because I don't want to uh, download a massive uh, image, which is going to slow down my website. So now that I've downloaded it, if I come back over here to my, to my site, I can click on select files. Here it is. And then upload image. So all I have to do now is to customize the size and notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this paintbrush icon and it's going to take me straight to all my settings over here, which is brilliant. So now I can increase it. So you can see now that's 132%, but normally I just go with 100%, which is the default size. And there we go. I have my design. So pretty much you can do this with any module that you uh, have here in Divi. Now let's take a look and see how we can adjust all our section settings. So if I click on this gear icon, this is what you need to do. Every time you want to go to a setting, click on the gear icon. So now we're on the gear icon of the section settings. Now there isn't much to do here, but uh, you can do things like maybe changing your background color. So if I go in and do that, you can see my background color has changed. I can also make it transparent if I need to by clicking over here and now we have our sliders here to make it transparent. Okay, so I don't want to do that. So I bring it back to white. Now something else that I can do over here is to come over here to the design. So on the design, we can go to sizing, we can adjust the width of this uh, section itself. We can also uh, make things centered. We can do quite a few things. Also go to the spacing here. Now let's say the space between uh, the, the design here is small. I can just perhaps maybe add 6% to the top and the bottom. Now I've given this a bit of breathing space. Again, just like how we did before, you can set this as a default. So I'm going to say create new preset. Now I want to set this as say uh, section padding. Perhaps maybe I can just say 6% or I can just say section padding. That's fine. Assign this to uh, default. So every time I'm going to uh, add a section to my design, it is going to have this 6% uh, here breathing space, which is brilliant. So you want to make sure that as you're designing, you want to be using all these presets because it makes your design process very, very easy. And also it makes your website fast. Now let's take a look at other areas of the design of uh, Divi here. So if you want to add anything, you can just click here on this plus button. Now we can add more content. So this time I'm going to click here and let's say I want to add an image. Just search for it like that and then select it. Okay. So I know we have one image in our uh, media library. I'm just going to click over here and then I'm just going to choose my image and then upload image. So just like that, I can add my image and it is very, very easy to do. Now, if you want to do any adjustments, uh, I can come over here to this tab alignment. I can center it, but there is more here. If I come over here to filters, 
I can play around with, um, with the saturation here. I can make it black and white. I can uh, reduce the brightness here. So this is kind of like a mini Photoshop in Divi. So it is uh, pretty, pretty cool. I can blur it if I want to, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. But anyway, that's the option. And if you want to uh, play around with the sizing here, I mean, right now it's set to auto, but you can set it to 100%. And you can do the same for the maximum width. But because our image is small, this is not going to uh, take effect unless you come over here and force full width. But you can see now the quality of this has really gone down. So it's up to you how you want to use that. Okay, brilliant. So now that we know how our builder works, let's take a look at our third tab. So if I click again over here, if you come over here to the advanced, this is where you have your custom CSS. You also have your conditions. So these display conditions are really cool because if you click here on this plus button, you can decide uh, what happens when um, when people uh, visit this particular item. So you can say this is based on date and time, page visit, post visit, number of views, and so on. So this could show after X amount of views uh, have been um, done. So let's say I come over here, number of views, I can say maybe 20, and then reset after duration, or I can just leave that, and then I can enable the condition. So this will start displaying after uh, this many times but there's a lot of options that you can choose here. We also have uh, visibility. So if you wanna show this on a mobile device, you can go in and disable on the desktop, disable on the tablet. So this now only shows on the mobile device. So as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of features packed into Divi inside this builder right here. Okay, so we also have things like transitions. So if you wanna add some, some transitions to this, you can do that. We also have our scroll effects. So you can decide how this interact as people are playing around with your website. But here's the thing, if you're new to Divi, I would highly recommend you don't add a lot of animation because this will slow down your website. Now let's go to um, back over here to visibility. So I wanna make sure that this shows. So there's also one area here that is uh, recently that has recently been added and that is AI. So again, I'm gonna come over here and you can see I've chosen the design tab, but if you wanna use AI, you can just come over here to the text. Now here it says generate with AI. So I'm gonna click here and notice what happens now. At the moment, it's loading up uh, all my content results, but I will, I'm going to have options on how I want to uh, add my text using AI. And this is very, very powerful. So straight away, you can see it has uh, given me my title here. It's also gone ahead and chosen my image for me because it knows that this has to do with you know holidays. And for the body text, this now has gone in and started and, uh, adding all my text here for me. So what I can do here is I can, use, I can use this text if I want to. I can refine the results by coming over here and I can say make it shorter like that. So I can regenerate this. So now we have the option of uh, choosing between these two. So I can choose this one here or I can choose the other one. So if I'm happy with this, I can use the, um, I can say use this text, but if not, I can go in and uh, re-edit this in the actual builder itself. So let's say I say use this text. Now you can see it says discover the power of DV, blah, blah, blah. And then I can come over here and say, you know what, maybe I can just get rid of this first paragraph and this is going to be the text that I'm going to use. Now let's take a look at how we can create pages uh, using pre-made layouts. So I'm gonna come over here to these three little dots. So what, how pre-made layouts work is you come over here to this plus button. So as you can see, we have a massive library of pre-designed layouts for us. So let's say you're working with a client and they want some sort of a shop. You can just come over here, choose the layout by clicking on it. Now the beauty of this is you can view a live demo or you can just come over here click on this little icon here and it shows you a preview of what the page looks like and you can also scroll through it, okay? So let's say I want to uh, add the about page. I can just click over here and then I can say use this layout. So there's an option now to either override what you have on this page or you can append this information. So I'm gonna say import presets. So now look at that. Now we have this design here all designed for us. So all I have to do now is to go in and change these images to my own images. So let's say I go into this uh, module here. I can just go in and choose my images based on AI, by the way. <laughs> so I can say generate and uh, replace. So AI now is gonna kick in and generate my images for me. 
So if you're happy with any of these, you can just go in and select it and then say use this image. Now notice that this was very smart because it went in and chose something that relates to farming, which is brilliant. So over here, I can just go and save and on the text, I can just go in now and replace or generate this with AI. So I'm gonna go in and generate. So I'm gonna say improve with AI and then rephrase. So you can see here it says building a nurturing food community. I think I like that, so I'm gonna choose it. So I can continue doing this until I've redesigned my page. So you can either use AI or you can use uh, your own words on this actual website. So once you're done, you can just save your website and pretty much you are good to go. So a few tips I wanna share with you is, let's say you wanna save this or share this uh, with someone who uses Divi. You can just come over here to portability like that and then you want to export it. So you can click here to export and this page here is going to be exported and importing it is very easy. You can come to the same place, click on import and this will import the design again back onto your page. Pretty, pretty cool. Now there's also something that you can uh, play around with here and that is your builder settings. So over here we have different modes. We have hover mode, click mode and we also have uh, wireframe mode. So all these are different design modes you can use. Now, let me show you how they work. So let's say I choose wireframe mode like that. This will show me pretty much everything here, showing me where it ends and where it starts. So let's say I wanna go in and edit this. I can just click on this gear icon and just like that, I'm in here and I start designing. Now, once I hit save, notice that all these uh, lines come back in again, showing me where everything is, but I can disable this if I need to and then I can go to click mode. So with click mode, you can hover here and see exactly what you can click on. So let's say this is the item I wanna click on. I can just click on that and then click on the gear icon. So it just depends what uh, mode you wanna work in, but this just makes the, the, the builder very, very easy to use. Now let's say there's some areas that you can't really find while you're designing, you can go into wireframe mode. Now this wireframe mode is also very, very powerful because uh, it shows you where pretty much everything is. So if I click here on the settings, I can go into the settings of this and then I can start working on it. Finally, I wanna talk about uh, the layers. So as you're designing, in fact, let's get rid of this. So as you're designing, you may want to see things in layers. So this is where you come over here to the layers icon like that. And this now is going to show you where pretty much everything is. So this is our header, our story about. So as soon as I click here, it's going to move to that particular section. And then I can just toggle this and it'll show me the rows, the columns, and pretty much everything that's here. And then I can just click on this gear icon to then customize whatever it is that I need to customize. So this is how you get started with Divi. Let me know what you guys think in the comments box below. If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.